Episode 133 of the Late Night Vision Show. Welcome back, y'all. We have another great episode for you today. More thermal talk, more reviews. Um, we are going to talk about all that kind of stuff. We may even touch into some things, uh, some some personal successes here at the beginning of the show. But before we get into that, Mr. Jason Robertson, owner of Outdoor Legacy. How you doing, sir? I am doing good tonight. How are you, Hans? Good. So I mentioned personal successes and uh, on past episodes, like maybe... 131 or 132 a couple episodes ago we talked about your daughter uh shot a doe this year she's actually shot two, two. so far right yep. mm-hmm. yeah she's a pro your daughter's a pro she's, no she's no. uh not yet this is her second year of that's deer right. hunting right mm-hmm. yeah so um my daughter came to me for the first time a week ago and she's taking an outdoor class in in her school that we go to in our little town and they're teaching them how to hunt fish i mean they're showing videos of field dressing deer they're helping them get their hunters education safety certificate which i'm man i love it you know them having that opportunity in the in public school to to take a class like that which i'm completely shocked uh but they're i mean they're learning everything how to hold their rifles you know when they're walking around and it's it's just all great stuff and i'm nerding out on everything that she comes home and tells me about, you know, uh, of all the things that she's learned. Well, she came to me a week ago, Jason, and said, Daddy, I, I'm, I want to shoot a doe this year. And I, I can tell you, um, I was probably more excited than I should have been. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, you know, anytime your kid shows an interest in something, you know, she sees me going to hunt all the time. She she sees all the rifles and gear and all the stuff that you and I are testing. And she, uh, it's very common for her to, to go to school in the morning and there's going to be a dead hog, um, <laughs> out in the front yard waiting to be drug off, you know, that day. So they're used to seeing that kind of stuff. But when she came to me and said she wanted to shoot a doe, uh, I was pumped about it, man. I was super pumped. Um, but then I thought about, Oh my gosh, what, what can she shoot? Because she has shot rifles before. But, uh, you know, not, not too much, not too often, really haven't practiced enough with her. So, um, your daughter has had great success with the 300 blackout. Mm -hmm. Um, I've got a 300 blackout AR pistol. And, um, I was like, man, it just seems, uh, it, it seems like a no brainer for a kid, you know, especially when you're shooting it suppressed, there's just not a lot of recoil, yeah. you know, and, and it's not loud. Well, it's you something can get that, they that can, stock down short. That's the big deal. You can get the stock down short. So or the, can, the brace if you're using a pistol, yeah, either way. Exactly. Don't say it. Call it a stock for sure. The brace, you can get it down short where they can reach the trigger well and line up for, uh, for a good uh, uh, lineup shot. But, you know, did that. I, I Using uh, ammo is a big thing when it comes to 300 blackout because, uh, you know, some people don't think that they're a great hunting round. So I uh, went with the discrete ballistics, 188 grain ammo, which is always get rave, uh, rave reviews when it comes to hunting and hog hunting. So uh had a couple of those uh, boxes uh, sent down to me a while ago. I've been sitting on them, but finally put them to good use. We got in the stand and it lined up perfect. I mean, we sat there for an hour, had a group of does come out. She shot the biggest one. I was, when they came out, I was probably more nervous than she was. <laughs> uh, they walk out and I said, all right, baby, you know, pick out the biggest one, make sure it's standing broadside, you know, don't move unless they're moving. Cause you know, they were walking out the bait pile, but they were steady. We were in a pop-up blind, but they were steady staring at us. And I said, don't, don't move until they move, um, to, to line up the shot. But, did you have her was, on the, the Kofi Yeager tripod and the grip? Had her on the Kofi, Kofi Yeager tripod. It was locked in tight. That's the way for a it. kid, man. It that is, is the just way the way. And that Reaper grip on that tripod, uh, uh, it's, they don't have to, all they got to do is just get up to it. Yep. And she had practiced the weekend before. She shot fantastic. I was not concerned about her not being, able, it was a 45 yard shot, is what I set up for it to be. But I, uh, I was coaching her, you know, while she was lining up and she looked over at me and she's like, daddy, I got this. <laughs> and it reminded me of what your daughter told you last year when a doe walked out. And didn't she say something like, that's a dead deer or yeah, something Yeah, like she that. did. She, she had her, she had her finger over there, uh, indexed yeah. and she's getting ready to put it on the trigger. And she goes, 
Daddy, that's a dead doe. <laughs> and I'm thinking, so, wow, you're awful confident. I hope it is. And it yeah. was. <laughs> so when my daughter, I kind of just smiled when she said that, because it's almost like, hey, knucklehead, leave me alone. I'm trying to line up a shot here. <laughs> you know, you keep talking. Quit talking to but, me. Yeah. But she's like, daddy, I got this and pulled the trigger. Uh, good, clean shot. Doe went down. Um, you know, and she, I was proud of her. She did really good. I mean, to her. I don't know how your daughter reacted to it, but to her, it was, I mean, she didn't seem nervous at all. Afterwards, you know, she had the, the shakes a little bit after you, uh, you know, you shoot something for the first time, but she, uh, she was a champ, but I was proud of her. So that's great. Congratulations, Macy. What a great memory. And, uh, I am, I'm super pumped about it. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I, absolutely. I tell you that that's a, that's a cool class. And I don't know uh, how, I know yeah. y'all live in a podunkville Backwoods East yeah. Texas, but I still can't believe that public school is doing a outdoor yeah. and, and hunting and fishing class. And it's, it sounds really cool. So it's a good deal. Yeah, it is fun. It is fun. So uh, thank you all for joining us again. It's episode 133. We are doing the full review of the Bearing Optics Super Hulkster. So you've heard us talk about the, uh, the Hulkster R25 millimeter. You've heard us also talk about the Hulkster R35 millimeter. So the the final or the uh, I guess the the upper latest echelon of the, yeah, the, the bur- latest bearing optics thermal uh, scopes is the the super hogster. So we're going to be doing the full review of that this uh, today, and we're, as always, we're going to be running down the specs. Uh, we're going to be talking about ID ranges, um, our overall thoughts, who it's good for, obviously our likes and dislikes. And uh, hopefully by the end of this show, you will have a good idea if this is the thermal scope for you, or maybe you need to be looking in a different direction. But that's the point of doing these reviews to help you make an educated decision on what you need to uh, move forward with. If you have any questions or if you're interested in purchasing anything night vision or thermal related, uh, please give Jason a call at 877-350-1818. You can always find all of these uh, night vision scopes and optics or monoculars, or anything else uh, on the OutdoorLegacyGear.com website. Go check it out. But Jason, let's you roll right into the specs of this uh, brand spanking new thermal scope that man, a lot of people have been talking about like crazy, and they want to know what's going on. What's, That's right. So it, you know. so this is the Super Hulkster. This is not the mediocre Hulkster. This is not the <laughs> average Hulkster. This is I the Super you, man, they, Hulkster. They have so, the name game they, down. They, they do. This is the Super. So I don't know what, what comes after this one, the Super Califragilistic, <laughs> super but this duper. is the, so yeah, the Super Duper Hulkster. But no, this is it. And uh, so I'm going to get run down these specs. I know to some people, this is absolutely boring. I know to some people, uh, they tell me, man, it all sounds really good, but I have no idea what you're talking about. And I have other guys that are like, hey, you left off a spec. There's this one thing in there that you so So it, there's, there's something in here for everybody. If this doesn't mean anything to you, uh, hang on. And uh, Hans and I'll be talking about uh, the scope overall in layman terms in just a minute. But I do want to go over these specs, the Super Hogster. Uh, is come in at or is coming in at three thousand one hundred and twenty dollars with a uh, standard quick detach mount. This is the quick detach mount that is on the other Hogster scopes as well. I'm sure we'll talk about that uh, just a little bit, uh, in, you know, about what we think about that in a few minutes. But moving on along, uh, it is a two point nine power. Uh, with a digital zoom going up to 11.6. Now, I'm just going to shoot you straight. If you call me, and even on this show today, I'm going to refer to this as a three-power scope. <laughs> okay, it's yeah. just easier to talk about 3 to 12 than 2.9 to 11.6. Okay, it's <laughs> so close. But I think that's, uh, you know, Bering wanted to be honest about, I guess, what it really is. And uh, but but I'm going to call it a three to twelve. But uh, two point nine to eleven point six is the uh, the actual magnification range. Uh, it has got a thirty five millimeter objective lens. Uh, it is a three eighty four by two eighty eight sensor. It is uh, forty millikelvins, uh, which that forty millikelvin rating is just the sensitivity of it. It means it's a really sensitive, very good uh, thermal sensor. It's twelve microns. It's got an LCOS display screen at 1280 resolution. So it's 1280 by 960 on the display. It has an internal 
video recording. It has no microphone, so it doesn't record audio at all, but it does internally record video on a uh, built-in 16 gigabyte memory card. So you don't have to buy a memory card. You don't take the memory card out, anything like that. You just plug it into your computer to pull the videos off. It has eight different reticles. Three of those reticles are bullet drop compensating reticles. So you've got three BDC reticles. You can change the reticles to four different colors. It's got four different zeroing profiles, so you can put it on four different weapons, or you can use the same weapon with, uh, you know, maybe ones for subsonic, ones for supersonic, however you want to do that. Four different zeroing profiles, four color palettes. It does have Wi-Fi and an app, but it is for Android only. Okay, there is there. It absolutely is not compatible with iPhones. Uh, I don't have an Android phone, but I did. I uh, dig up an old Android, I say old, it was like a year old Android tablet that I don't know, I'd ended up with somehow I'd never used. Uh, it, it, I got it on there and, and was able to watch a couple of videos. So it seemed to work. I did not mess with it much. It has a 42 foot wide horizontal field of view at 100 yards. It weighs 18 ounces without the mount on the bottom of it. Uh, I don't know what the, the mount weighs, a few more ounces. It takes two CR123A lithium batteries. You can get about three to three and a half hours of runtime in normal weather conditions on that, uh, above, say, 50 degrees. Uh, but again, it's two CR123As. You can also use rechargeable uh, CR123A type batteries. And there's actually even a setting in the menu that allows you to choose whether you have the rechargeable batteries or the regular CR123A lithiums because the battery gauge will be wrong if you have it on, you know, if you're using the different batteries. So that's nice. You got two options there. Uh, you also have the option of using an external USB battery pack. The scope is rated for down to negative 14 degrees. It has got an IPS 6.7 rating that is completely dust proof. It's submersible in water for three foot for 30 minutes. It's got about an eight second startup and it's got an 1100 yard detection range. Uh, and uh, two, two things I did leave off. It does have a defective pixel repair and it also has a picture in picture function. And something that uh, we've been asked to talk about is the ergonomics of these scopes. And this scope is fully ergonomic for left or right handed people. Uh, all the buttons are right down the top. There's three buttons to control it. Hans is probably fixing to show those. Uh, but there's, if you're left or right handed, it doesn't matter. Fully uh, ergonomic. Again, that is the Super Hogster Specs, $3,120. Man, you did good. You even talked about um, the, the fact of, uh, you know, just not just the dust rating, but like <laughs> the hey, eight second startup time. That's what I'm I here mean, for. Hey, this is if this you is... need more specs than you just got now, right now, then you know too much for your own good. Exactly. So. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> you don't, that's you did a good job, my friend. That's Thank that's you, uh, really d the the startup time is pretty important. Uh, another good thing is this does have a standby mode. This unit, mm -hmm. so you can put the you know basically shut the screen off, but once you push the button for it to come back on powers right back up real quick. Yeah. So there's a standby mode. So um, functionality, just the overview of the scope. This thing is small, man. It's the, basically the same mm -hmm. size as the Hulkster R35 millimeter. Okay. You I'm going to interrupt you right time. there. Yeah. I'm going to interrupt you right there. Cause that's something that I've been asked about. This yeah. scope is in the exact same housing as the, the Hogster 35 millimeter. If you put yeah. two of them side by side, because I have, I had all of these for, for yeah. several weeks side by side, and you have to pick it up and you have to look at the label on the side to know the difference. Yeah. So if you're familiar yeah. with what the, the Hogster 35 millimeter looks like, this is the exact yeah. same exterior unit. So it didn't mean to interrupt I mean, you. I want to bring that up. No, it's fine. I'm, I've got it in my hand. I can almost wrap my whole hand on it yeah. around it right now. So if you're listening on, the audio only version of this podcast, you want to see it, go check out YouTube, the late night vision show episode 133. You'll be able to find the, the review, but yeah, I mean, you can see the scope. It's tiny. I, and I say tiny, but compared to a lot of other thermals out there, it's very, very small, which is great. I mean, it's looks great on the rifle, uh, you know, light, lighter weight than, than some out there, not cumbersome, not going to bang it around as much. You know, if you're, 
got something smaller, but so it does have the uh, objective lens focus. So this is a focusable objective lens. It's got the eyepiece diopter focus on it. Like Jason said, it is a very ergonomically friendly uh, button layout, ambidextrous wise. You know, it's got the three buttons on the top. They the three buttons, uh, since this does have a, a, an additional feature or two that the other two uh, less expensive models don't have, there's some multi-button uh, presses that you're going to do at the same time to control some different things, uh, you know, refresh screen, uh, different things like that, but it has all that in the instruction manual. Uh, button layout is fine, though, right there on the top. Uh, you know, the, we talked about the, the QD mount. We've talked about this on the other ones. This does have the same QD mount that the other models have. Uh, I've, it works great. I mean, it's it, fine to me. It, it uh, returns it. Yeah, it returns to zero. We've had no issues. Yeah, I've tested it. I've taken it off. I've put it back on. It does return to zero. It does not, you know, some people like the locking lever on the QD mount. This does not have a locking lever. But when you tighten this thing down and you flip that lever down, it's there. It, you it, don't. You can tell yeah. it's not going anywhere. It's not no. technically locking, but it's there's not. no issue whatsoever. And I'm gonna tell you, um, I, I, I'm shooting this. The the Super Hawkster on my six five Grendel pistol, but the thirty five millimeter, the Hawkster R thirty five millimeter. I tested it on an, a three oh eight AR pistol, and it sucker kicks. It's got a kick, and still had no problems with the mount whatsoever. So I think the mount's just fine. Uh, you got your button, your your battery compartment right here. Very easy to put the batteries in. Uh, you know, you could even do it in the dark. It's not that big of a deal. It's got the plastic lens cap cover. Always love the plastic lens cap cover. It feels more secure, more protected. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I mean, we'll get into the menu and all that, but looking at the outside of the scope and the functionality of the outside of the scope, very easy to maneuver and get around. So uh, I think that's all the important highlights of everything you need to see, but I mean, it is, if you lined up this scope and the 35 millimeter Hawkster R on a table and took the label off, you could not tell the difference. There, at yeah, all. you can't tell it. No, because yeah. there'd be, when I had them, seriously, I had them all sitting up on top of my gun safe and I'd pick it up and I'd literally have to like get my phone yeah. out, turn the flashlight yeah. on to go, which one is this? So, yeah. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. So what do you think? Uh, realistically, conservatively, the identification range is on a hog or a coyote. Do you have any idea what's your guesstimate here of what you would say? It's funny that you say it, Jason, because I had this thing out uh, as soon as um, as last night. I had it out hunting last night. I was hunting with it, and I I ID'd a coyote at 300 yards with the Super Hawkster. Um, mm -hmm. Now. That may or may not be impressive to you <laughs> yeah. or to anybody out there, but I could easily tell it was a great night, no humidity, low dew point. I mean, cool, cool yeah. clear. It was perfect night. But at 300 yards, I could easily, um, well, actually, it was a little bit further than that. It was probably closer to 350 yards because uh, I've got these ranges at this property pretty nailed down. But it was about 350 yards. Saw the coyote out in the field. Now, I will say this, when you say ID a coyote, that doesn't mean I can see the ears poking up off the head and I can see, you know, how long the bushy tail is. And it but, doesn't mean you're going to shoot it, but it means you it go, mean yeah, that's it. not a but hog. I, but part of IDing, I would say, we need to probably do talk, have a segment about this but sometimes, but part of IDing is like using percentages. It's like, I'm about... 80% yeah. sure that's a coyote Pro process so of go, elimination is what a lot yeah, of it, it is, is. process elimination is, is percentages. And then from that, you're like, okay, I'm going to pursue this animal, meaning either mm -hmm. I'm going to stalk to it closer, or I'm going to call that animal in closer to, mm -hmm. to get a better, uh, yeah. you know, without a doubt what this, what this animal is, I'm about to take a shot at. So, uh, 350 yards did I think not that's, have a problem. I think huh? that's fair. No, I agree. I, yeah. I think that's very fair. I, I, yeah. I wanted to say, tell this story here real quick. Uh, I know we're not doing a comparison between this and the uh, Hogster two power 35 millimeter that looks just like mm -hmm. it. But I, I've had a lot of people say, is the image quality better? This is a 12 micron unit where the other mm -hmm. uh, Hogsters are 384 by 288, 17 microns. Does it really make a difference? Does the magnification make a difference? And my answer to that is yes. So I want to just real quickly, you know, this will go into your ID range thing as well. So I had the 
two power hogster 35 millimeter out one night uh and i looked down there i've got a tree in my pasture 325 yards and right beside that tree i said man i think there's two hogs those have got to be two and i might have told this story on this show i don't know uh but i said those have got to be hogs i don't know what else they could be i mean it's not a horse it's not cows it's not i'm just again process of elimination yeah. but i'm like i don't know i'm not I mean yeah Obviously, I'm not going to shoot that far, but I just, they look like it, but they're, they're uh -huh. blobs at that far. And yeah. so, uh, I go in there and I grab the super hawkster. I said, I'm going to get something else that I can really look that far and see. I grabbed the super, walked out there, turned it on, still couldn't tell, zoomed up. As soon as I zoomed up one time and got a little more magnification, which I was at six power, I went, oh, that's two deer laying down. And so what I could see was, is I could see their head sticking up yeah. and, you know, just that, that neck and the round head. And so now I'm going back and forth side by side with the, the two power and this super hogster. And it's just, it, it, that's when you see that ID range difference. You yeah. see that better image quality with, it's not that they just look like this terrible, ugly blob. They look, well, that it looks kind of long. It's low to the ground. But what I couldn't see was there wasn't enough detail to see that head sticking up. And here's the other thing, right. folks, you got to remember about these East Texas deer we're talking about. These things weigh a hundred pounds, a white tailed yeah. doe here, a hundred pounds on the hoof is a normal size doe. You know, a buck will be bigger than that. These were does. So, we're not talking about a 250 pound animal. We're talking about something that's actually smaller yeah. than the hogs we hunt. But, exactly. but the point is 325 yards. I could see a white tail, a hundred pound white tail doe laying down in the Bermuda grass could see her head sticking up enough yeah. to go. Definitely not a coyote, not a hog. That's a right. deer. And I couldn't do that with the two power just at that long range and them being so small. Yeah. But anyway, that I, I totally agree with you. I think anywhere in that three to three fifty is very reasonable. Some nights probably gonna do better. Some nights might do a little bit less. Yeah. Yeah. So uh yeah, ID range uh, about that, you know, three fifty yardage or so. Um I don't know, did it list on the official specs from bearing as far as the detection range? I really if it did. Uh, if you would have been listening, you would have heard that towards the end, yeah. but that is, uh, and this is actually interesting. It's it's 1100 yard detection range, and it specifically said something in the specs about that being a hog sized animal. So, oh, really? That's okay. important that's, because yeah. I know a lot of brands. The, the detection range is a five and a half to six foot tall, uh, yeah. human sized object right. standing up. So uh, people go, well, what's the difference? Well, the difference is, you know, as you're looking. Uh, across uh, just say a flat expanse the further something gets away the more that it blends into uh mm -hmm. the, the ground so that the taller it is the more like you likely you are to see it and so yeah. a five or six foot tall human standing up it is a way easier to see than a coyote that might only be 18 inches at the you know top of his shoulder or a hog or whatever so anyway mm -hmm. definitely no 1100 yards on a hog size target and i think that's just again that's to see the heat not to, to id it i think that's probably very reasonable yeah yeah yep so what are your everybody's waiting now because you are the thermal expert on the show oh boy I'm not, i didn't go. say you're a thermal expert in in the world okay I just said okay on the show. yeah okay. uh, <laughs> that's so, even debatable i've got a 50 yeah, 50 shot a, yeah so everybody's wanting to know what we're going to have we're going to name it jason's overall thoughts corner what's your overall you thoughts go. on this scope and i'll um, tell you if they're correct i'm going to give you a, my thoughts on your opinion and I'm do you want me to tell my overall thoughts or who it's good <laughs> for or what do you want me to tell here um yeah, no, I, I want to separate those, your overall okay. thoughts, and then I want to talk about who it's good for. All right, my overall thoughts are, I, boy, you're going to get me, to, I'm going to, I got to be careful not to give my likes here, because I'm just going to give my likes. My yeah, overall yeah. thoughts is that I really do like the scope. I think uh, for the size, for the dollar, I think it's a value. Uh, I think you can spend more money, and you can get some other scopes that are probably a little more polished, maybe have a little better menu system. Uh, just, you know, maybe a little better here and there if you kind of want to nitpick it. But I think for the dollar, I think it provides a lot of value. I don't think uh, you can get any other scope on the market uh, with this kind of image quality 
and a three power base magnification. So you're getting two things. You're getting a little higher magnification and a very good image quality uh, with internal video recording. I don't think there's anything on the market uh, that's going to have all of those things in it uh, at this price, 3120. And one thing I like to point out about this scope, and I try to do this uh, helping customers decide between this and some of the other brands, is you've got to remember this scope, when you take it out of the package, all you need is two CR123A batteries to stick in the side and you put it on your rifle and you go hunting. You do yeah. not need to buy uh, another mount. You okay. do not need to buy uh, any type of proprietary rechargeable batteries or anything like that. I mean, these are standard off the shelf batteries. So when you look at some of the other scopes that this scope actually kind of competes with, those scopes look like they're a similar cost, but then when you really get down to it by the time you buy qd mounts buy a couple batteries right. you've actually added say you know 400 more dollars to the total cost and so it really starts to separate this and makes this scope look like an even better deal so overall uh my take is i think for the dollar it's really really hard to beat yeah. so i'm gonna save my overall thoughts for the likes and dislikes section, since you talked about a lot of your likes. No, I but, didn't. Get, okay. For the likes. Okay. I didn't give my yeah, dislikes. All right. Exactly. But I'm going to save my likes for later on. But so, um, the thoughts on who it's good for. So I think that, uh, you know, it, we, and we talk about magnification is a very important topic mm -hmm. when it talks about who is it good for. Um, you, as you know, you and I've been using the Pulsar Thermion XG now for, two mm -hmm. or three months and probably neither nobody out there would have thought a three power scope would be our favorite scope. <laughs> but uh three power is really starting to grow on me. And that's coming from somebody that um, hog hunts, you know, 90% of the time. And uh, you know, the, the uh, hogster being at that three power base magnification of whether you're, Hog hunting uh, or coyote hunting, I think you can find some advantages um, for both. If you're a southern hog hunter, but you like to coyote hunt as well, like a lot of us do. I mean, a lot of us hog hunters are also coyote hunters. So they they, they like that, uh, I guess, the crossover uh, effectiveness of having a little bit more magnification. But what you got to do if you like to have a little bit more magnification, you like to coyote hunt and you like to hog hunt, um, is you just got to remember to not get so close. You know, if you're mm -hmm. normally getting up to 30 yards, maybe step back to 50 yards and take a shot. If you got a three power scope versus what you may not have gotten before. Uh, so I, I hate to say this is good for everybody, but it's going to be something yeah. that I think a lot of coyote hunters are going to flock to because of the three power. Uh, you know, I think that the narrower field of view is uh, going to be something to think about if you are primarily just taking 50 yard shots, you know, 90% of the time, that's something that needs to be, uh, managed and, and thought about. Uh, but I think that three power is growing in popularity. There's people out there, Jason, you know, that all I want is a one and a half power. That's all I want. Mm -hmm. I don't want anything more. Mm -hmm. Or even then it kind of like, okay, all I want is a two power. I don't want anything more, but it's creeping up slowly, but surely, but all, you know, all these magnifications are starting to creep up a little bit and people are saying, Oh man, I, I kind of like that, that two and a half power. Oh man, I kind of like that three power. You know, it's, it makes those, you know, short shots, those short shots really easy. And I can be effective when I'm taking long, longer coyote shots. So, right. but I'm, I'm saying that to say this, most Southern hog hunters are also coyote hunters. And so, uh, and I don't want to say everybody out there is, but there is something to appreciate for having a scope that you can be effective hunting anything out there that may come up or, you know, may so, present yeah. a, a chance to. I won't disagree with that. You know, you're talking about the magnification. I will say one thing. Uh, I guess I, w I might disagree with you a little there. Uh, I, right. I, no, I, I do like the three power. We are, you know, we've been using three power scope now recently and really do like it. But I will tell you that, and I've told some guys this uh, on the phone that I do at times, you know, switch back 
to my two power scopes because uh, when I am doing nothing but super close hog hunting, I actually do prefer the two power uh, mm -hmm. over the three power personally. I just, I like getting close and I, I sometimes miss that with the three powers because I do have to back up to, to say, 40 yards or 50 yards yeah. and I like being right up on top of them. So, but, but what I would say to you, I do agree. I think if, if you're looking for a, a dual purpose scope, okay. If you yeah. want, and I, this is called the hogster, okay. Super hogster. And it is, <laughs> but if you're wanting to, to coyote hunt as well, uh, I think this is the scope. I mean, if you're just coyote hunting, this is the scope to buy. Um, no, no question in my mind about it. Now, well, if you go, well, Hey, I'm really, I'm hunting somewhere in the South. I, I am not going to be shooting much over a hundred yards. I'm getting up close to hogs. I don't care about video recording Buy the two power hogster. Yeah. I mean, exactly. save yourself, you know, that several hundred dollars there, 2675 versus 3120, save it Buy the two power. But I do think if you are looking for the little bit longer range, this is in your budget. I think it's really good. And then, yeah, you know, I'm just going to wrap this to say, who is it good for? I think it's both. I think it is the hundred percent agree. It is the hog hunter. You can make it work. Even if you're, you know, shooting up close, uh, what you're just going to get into, I think sometimes is that it's a give and take. And I've found on these three powers, you give up this field of view, which you are giving up. Uh, so you're, you're giving up some of that. You do have to start a little further back, but when those hogs uh, are out there at, you know, running off at a hundred, 125, 150 yards, you've got that extra base mag right there without zooming it up, which you can't do in the moment anyway. And you can make, make some better shots there because you're getting them on a little bit better. So a coyote hunter, this is the scope to get a hog hunter, uh, that like you said, also wants to do coyote hunting. I would go with this, or if you're hunting big fields and you can't get close or you just don't feel like it, then I'd probably go with this one. But uh, I, I, think, I, I do think the two power has a, a lot of benefits for you know a lot yeah. of guys. And, and you're exactly right. I probably not a lot more, but I probably do a little bit more coyote hunting than you, you do. You do. Um, you absolutely just because of the properties that I have, but, um, you know what I think they should do. And I, I want it to be known here on this show that, that I made this million dollar suggestion oh, and I have brother. lots of million dollar idea ideas. If you just ask Jason, <laughs> he does. Uh, the problem They're, is that they nope. cost, uh, a million dollar, a million they, and one dollars to they, produce. They cost two million actually. <laughs> and it's <laughs> two million dollars, but, but I have plenty of $1 million ideas. Mm. Um, Bearing Optics needs to come out with a three and a half power, uh, and they call it the Dogster. You got the Hogster and you got the Dogster. <laughs> oh, oh and, gosh! And, uh, why hey, not a four power? Bearing why Optics, not going, if going you're to the four power, Dogster. Hey, the Dogster, and that is going to be the new. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm just joking. This is. Not, I don't want there to be any buzz on the internet that they're coming out with the Dogster. <laughs> it's a but good idea, dogster, though. The th three and a half power or four power, the Dogster from Bearing Optics. And coyote hunters will buy it just because of the name, just because. Okay, of, think about bearing, the hog if, hunters. If you're listening to this, you're absolutely free to use this name. No royalties required. All we want is to get the first one of these on the late night vision let show. Us, so let us go test the, it first. Let us go the test the dogster. I think it's a great name. All right, the so I want to go. Dogster. Yeah. I want to go here and talk about my likes and dislikes real quick, and I'm going to let you chime in. But uh, yeah. I, I've kind of already said my likes. Number one, it's small. Uh, if you're looking for a unit that you want to be able to use as a handheld and pop onto the rifle when you got a buddy hunting with you or, you know, whatever, maybe you just, uh, I, I talked to a guy who said, I want to hunt with it, but I have a lot of other things that I want to do. I want to use it around the farm. I want to look for cows. I want to check the chicken coop. I want to, you know, I said, well, this is what you want because it is small. It's lightweight. It's the same size as a handheld monocular. So I do like the size. Yeah. Uh, I do like that it can be used as a dual purpose. I like the price. I like the image quality. Now, I want to get over here to what I don't like. Uh, there are a few things that I am going to nitpick that, that bother me just a little bit. Uh, the biggest one is the fact that, and this is true on all the Hogsters, but it, it really bothered me on this scope, I think maybe just because of the price. I expected there to be an option here for this. When you're zeroing this scope, you cannot zoom in. So it is locked at three power base magnification. The other scopes are locked at, at their, you know, respective 1.4 and two power base mags. Yeah, and, and, and some clarification on that too, just so people don't get confused. 
you you're right when you're zeroing it you can't you can't zoom in while you're moving your reticles to the point of impact so um when you clear it out and you save your reticle position then you can zoom in to take the shot to see where your next round's going but when you're adjusting your reticles to the point of impact you can't zoom in no you so so when you're in the zeroing function and you're in that menu setting you cannot zoom you can't turn on picture in picture anything now it actually even says in the manual that you should not zoom in to take the shots and i actually called and talked to uh, the tech at bearing about this. And he said, no, don't do it. You don't need to be zoomed in. And he had a very technical explanation, but, uh, I know that with every other thermal scope I've ever used in my life, I've zoomed in to zero. Oh, yeah. and, and when we zero at 50 yards, so we're close, but even at 50, uh, I like to use a very small bullseye, you know, maybe an inch by an inch, one and a half by one and a half, something small. And the reticle just covers that up. And so it's, it's doable. There's workarounds. I got it zeroed in. I know Hans told me he zeroed it yesterday in three shots. It's once yeah. you know how to do it, it's doable. I just think that I would really like to be able to, to, to zoom in while I'm zeroing. Now, that's probably my biggest gripe. Not the end of the world. You're going to zero it and forget about it. Uh, again, I've never heard anybody else mention that. Uh, so it's me just being nitpicky. But uh, I think that... The menu systems, we talked about this a little bit on the other Hogsters. Mm -hmm. I just don't think, I think with there's only three buttons, including the power button. So Hans mentioned here, you've got buttons doing multiple things. Sometimes you've got to press two buttons. I think the general usage of it, when you figure out how to use it, you're going to be using one press of you know, one of those three buttons, most of the time is all you're going to need. But right. I do think if you want to do everything the scope can do, uh, you are going to some little funny button presses that I don't know. I just, it's not hard. It's just not the, it's a little more complicated because there's only three buttons. Uh, and then I think if I want to get super nitpicking and this isn't really anything abnormal, I just, I notice it on this scope compared to the others. This eight second startup is longer mm -hmm than it the is. others and we yeah. see this sometimes with 12 micron scopes i don't know anything about this i'm not an electrical engineer or a thermal engineer but something i've seen on some of these 12 micron optics they seem yeah. to take longer to boot up it's eight seconds is not a long time but and it's it's not any longer than some of these other scopes we use but yeah. i just noticed that there's a i think a really quick startup time on the other two hogsters. So I noticed oh, it on this sure. one, but yeah. guys, we're here to tell you what we like and what we don't like. I, I know there's going to be guys and I always say this, they're like, well, you're just nitpicking that thing to death. I am, but Hey, you ask what I don't like. That's the, this, yeah. you know, there's no perfect scope. And I'd say that's the, the few minor things. They're yeah. definitely nothing that would prevent me from buying this scope. Yeah. Uh, so your dislikes and uh, my dislikes are the same. So I'm not going to reiterate those again. Um, that eight seconds uh, is a little long. Um, it's not a long time unless you've got a hog running across the field that you're trying to shoot at. That's right. And you got to hurry up and turn on the scope real quick. But um, the, the good thing is it does have standby mode, so you can leave that scope um, somewhat turned on, you know, just to uh -huh. screen off the, you know, reserve uh, battery and then turn that thing back on real quick. Um, my likes, I think it's got a very, very good – picture image, picture quality, whatever you want to call it. Uh, very impressive. Uh, the size is something that we, you and I both love. You talked about having a monocular and a scope, a, a great buddy scope, a great primary scope that if you want to remove it, put it back on, use it as a monocular, uh, you know, work uh, out on the farm with it and then hunt with it at night, whatever you want to do and whatever use, it's just so easy and convenient to have and to store. So really like that. Uh, the fact that, you know, I think if you want, and I'll just say it like this and I, and I'll sum up my likes with this. If you want a scope that you turn on and you have a great experience with and you have fun with, and it performs well, uh, it's really hard to, uh, you know, to go wrong with this scope. Now there are some, some negatives that Jason talked about, but I think that, like he said, they're, they're very, they're very minor. The menu thing, um, once you get it set up, you rarely ever change any of the settings at all. 
<laughs> pretty, you know, once I got mine set up, I, I never change it. The only thing I do is turn it on, uh, may zoom up every now and then, may start a video on it. But uh, once you get the menu set up, you're locked in and you're not going to mess with it. But if you just want a scope that's decently priced, you want to turn on and go shoot, you really don't care about uh, rechargeable batteries or, or anything like that. You just want something small, compact. I mean, this is a great, great option. Uh, and I think uh, if you have any questions about it or if you're considering this or you're considering any other scopes um, and you want to talk to somebody that's used this and use some of the other models out there, definitely give us a call. Uh, I'll give that number again, 877-350-1818. Uh, you can find it on OutdoorLegacyGear.com. Give us a, a call because I know that we can talk you through this. If this is something you've never heard about and you're hearing about this scope for the first time and you already had your mind uh, set on another scope out there, um, we, we can talk you through it and make you help, it, uh, you know, a better, uh, more educated decision based on what your needs are. And that's what's most important. Absolutely. So I want to bring up two more quick things uh, that better are things not, we, better not be negatives because no, they're positive. There, there are things that I should have brought up earlier. We should have right. should have brought up. Number one, uh, I've had this question. I know we talked about on the other Hogster models, they're 384, 17 microns. They have a different mm -hmm. sensor in them. And yeah. we talked about how when you zoom up in those models, uh, you, you, you know, good into the digital zoom, it gets pixelated and, and grainy around the edges. Uh, right. This unit does not do that. It's a different sensor. When you zoom up, uh, it looks very, very different. Uh, in my opinion, much better as you yeah, zoom into right. the menu. So I don't think you get that same pixelation. Now you're going to get the standard digital zoom pixelation that you're going to get in any thermal scope on the market, but it's mm -hmm. nothing that stuck out to me as being abnormal. And right. uh, the only other thing was, uh, I know there's something, humidity. Uh, these scopes uh, work oddly well in humidity. <sighs> Uh, yeah. I, it's something that somebody mentioned like, Hey, y'all didn't really talk about this, but those work really good. And like, yeah, you're exactly right. right. Uh, I've used this. Well, I've used all the, all these hogsters, uh, in high humidity after rain, like the worst conditions. Mm -hmm. And I brought out like some really expensive monoculars and scopes. They're like, Oh man, it looks terrible tonight. And you pull this hog yeah. track and you're like, Ooh, yeah. good gravy. That looks really good. So yeah. high humidity, I've been very, very impressed with. I just wanted to bring that up uh, because good that point. was something I know yeah. we'd forgot on the others. But with all that said, folks, uh, again, Hans already mentioned, uh, you know, if you're interested, you can go to OutdoorLegacyGear.com. You can give us a call, 877-350-1818. Uh, we do sell these. This is what we do. Outdoor Legacy uh, puts on the podcast. I had a guy that called the other day. I talked to him for 20 minutes all about the scopes. We got down to the end, and he thanked me for my time. And I said, well, hey, listen, if you want to buy one of these scopes, you know, let us know sometime. Call us. And he goes, Oh, well, I'm ready to buy one now. Do y'all sell them? <laughs> there is some major confusion going on. So, yes, we sell them. That's all we you do. Said, so. You should have said, well, hey, let me get the salesman real quick. Hang on. Yeah, hang on. Hello, exactly. this is Jason. How may I help you? <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't have a clue. We talked a long time. He said, well, yeah. I just thought y'all just did this for fun. I was like, no, yeah. my, my, my wife and kids like to eat. So, <laughs> no, but you can, you can uh, find Outdoor Legacy uh, also on all the social medias. Uh, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Mr. Hans East Texas. He hangs out uh, posting YouTube videos all the time. I know that he's going to be posting very soon a review of the Hogster uh, 25 millimeter 1.4 yeah. power and the 35 millimeter 2 power. He's going to be doing a side-by-side -side video of those, releasing those very soon with a lot of footage from the field. So be sure to check those uh, out on uh, his YouTube channel, H-A-N-S-E-T-X, Hans East Texas. You can also find him over on Instagram. I know this week he uh, put out a video from the Super Hawkster of him shooting a coyote. Great video, a little short clip. Go check that out. Gives you an idea of uh, the kind of image quality you'll be getting out of this scope. Uh, and also, uh, I know that it's going to be a few more weeks, but Hans will be doing a review from the Super Hogster as well, so you can find that on his YouTube channel. Uh, you've already found us, the Late Night Vision Show. We are on YouTube. We're on all the podcast apps, all the podcast uh, hosting networks every Thursday, and we are thankful that you have found us. If you've you first time, like, subscribe, do whatever you got to do to be sure you find us next time. 
And uh, we really, really do appreciate all your comments, all your support. And uh, you can also go anytime to thelatenightvisionshow.com. That's our website, and all the past episodes are there, and you can easily find them uh, if you're looking for that or any information uh, about us. So with that, Hans, did I leave anything out? Well, yeah, you, you did leave out the fact that um, next week is a holiday week, Thanksgiving. Oh, boy. I know what so this is So we be. are... Uh, uh, every year we've done it for, I guess, since the Two show started. Two or three years, yeah. It's I don't know. it's it. You know, we treat the holiday weeks um, with uh, not business as usual, not yep. scope reviews or hunt and talk because we do that. You know, every other week other of the year, fifty non-stop weeks of without the year. missing, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, without missing. Um, so we usually use that time to do something fun. And uh, if you know, if you're a, a loyal fan or a loyal listener or watcher of this show, you probably have a pretty good idea of what I'm about to tell you. Um, but every year at Thanksgiving, we do a wives episode and, um, we have informed our wives that they are going to be invited back onto the show, uh, this next week. So, uh, not today, but a week from Thursday, uh, is going to be, uh, the wives Thanksgiving episode day. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Thanksgiving day, Thanksgiving edition of the late night vision show. And we will be, uh, probably making some fools of ourselves. Our wives are going to try to embarrass us. Uh, yeah. You name it. Um, I want to be very clear. Jason that is you, already if, nervous yeah. and stressing if out you, about this If episode. you've watched any of these other wives episodes, you'll know that every year I say, we're not doing this again. We exactly. are not yeah. doing this again. They're not invited back. And then Hans loves to torture me. So me. they're, they're, in, they're invited me. back. So yeah, this year. So y'all, y'all check that out. It'll be fun. Yeah. We're going to do, we're going to do that again this year. So, uh, stay tuned and we'll kind of see if we can keep our composure, which probably is not going to happen, but thank you all for joining us again. Episode 133 is in the can. The full review of the bearing optics, super hogster. Go check it out. Thank you all for uh, watching. Stay safe in the fields. Keep making them bacon pancakes.